I have here this lovely little gel mold and I'm going to seal the ends of this mold with just regular old masking tape. Mind you, it has been wiped down with ethanol. So we're going to push down just like a Christmas present. And we're going to push the ends down and push to make sure that when we pour our agarose in here that it doesn't leak. And we'll do the same thing to the other end. So that should, that should do it. Now, a lot of people put their comb in after they pour their gel, but frankly, I've never seen any difference. I've never seen, uh, for me, any bubbling around the teeth of the, this comb. So I just usually put the, uh, the comb in immediately. Now, we're going to make the, the regular agarose gel. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for a minute. And I have here in this little way boat uh, about point, point 0.32 grams of regular agarose. You can't really see it. It's very pale and there's not a lot of it because I'm making a 0.8% regular agarose gel. So I have here a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. I'm going to pour in the agarose into this Erlenmeyer flask. And I have my one times Tris Borate EDTA buffer that I'm going to put into the flask. And I'm also going to wash out the way boat with the buffer because, of course, some of the agarose has stuck to the way boat. There we go. We have to melt that agarose, so we're going to take it to a microwave. We're going to microwave it on high for about 40 seconds till it boils, and then we're going to come back and pour the gel. Okay, so we've melted the agarose in the microwave, let it come to a boil, and now we're going to let it cool down, and we're going to put a magnetic stir bar that's been sterilized into this flask and then we're going to turn the uh, stir plate onto its lowest, <coughs> excuse me, lowest setting and it takes two or three minutes for that to cool down and while it's cooling down we're going to set the pipette, we're going to put in 64 microliters of uh, loading dye. So nice and easy, pre wet. And it's cool enough, still very warm to the touch. We don't want it to solidify in the flask. And there's the 64 microliters of the dye that will help us visualize the bands of DNA. Now that looks evenly uh, dispersed, that dye. So we're going to take a couple of large magnetic stir bars to anchor the small one that's inside. And now we're going to slowly pour this agarose gel into the mold. And that'll take 20 or 30 minutes to set. So this 0.8% regular agarose gel took 20 or 30 minutes to set or harden. And uh, I've just put it down into the gel rig. The rig has the same buffer that we made the gel with, the one times TBE buffer. This has been sitting in there for a couple of minutes because we want the buffer to be able to get around the teeth of the comb so we can easily extract the comb. And then after we do, we're going to put in the DNA that we digested overnight using restriction enzymes and then we're going to run it. Make sure that you're anchoring, holding down the mold. We're going to take this comb out. This is our DNA standard or ladder and I'm putting in 10 microliters of ladder and 
Here we go, there's the well. Nice and slow into the well and down into the second stop. There. And release the micro pipette plunger. And now we're going to get a fresh tip for every sample. This DNA was digested with only one enzyme. So we know where this enzyme cleaves the DNA. This is enzyme is PST1. And we're going to load that into the second well. Slowly. There we go. Excellent. This third vial was digested with PST1 and a second restriction endonuclease. So we're going to have DNA of different sizes. This has been digested with three restriction enzymes. So we'll have multiple bands appear in this well. Down into the well. And voila. We're ready to put the leads on. Black to black and red to red. This end is the negative end, and this is the, the red is the positive end. I want to make sure that we do the same in the front. Connect those leads. I'm going to run this gel at about between 100 and 130 volts. And when I've set the voltage, I'm going to hit the run button. And there we go. Now this can run between 45 and 60 minutes. Of course, the smaller fragments of DNA, the smaller bands or fragments, will migrate much more quickly through the gel, and they'll be closer to the end of the gel, whereas the larger fragments of DNA will not be able to migrate uh, as far in the gel because of their mass or size. And when that's finished running, you'll see that a small band of bromophenol blue will be near the end of the gel. That's when we're going to turn it off, and then we're going to look at our bands on the light bulb. So we have run this 0.8% agrose gel at 130 volts for 45 minutes. And we turned it off, and we stained this with a, a small amount of dye for 20 minutes. And then we de-stained it, rinsed it in ultra-pure water for another 20 minutes. And you can see, now we're going to look on the light box. We'll slide this right off onto the light box so that we can look at the bands. And you can see here was our DNA ladder, the standards of known sizes. And look at the banding patterns that we have with these different enzymes, the ba banding patterns of DNA. So we can, we can now tell the sizes, the unknown sizes of DNA by comparing to the standards. And this is very helpful to have uh, very important information to help characterize any novel DNA that we may be examining.